So I want to talk about who is on the Lord's side. Hey, come on. You're a sassy group of people. You can say it. (laughs) All right. So here's the thing. I remember a few years ago, I had a vision and I remember seeing this foot coming out of the heavens and it came down and it hit right over the United States of America very hard. And it went very harsh to the left and began to shake like everything in its path. And then it shifted over to the right, the the foot of the Lord, and it began to shift it and shake it. And then I saw it settle right in the middle. And I heard the voice of God, and the voice that I heard was this, who is on the Lord's side? Now here's what we have to understand. We're celebrating July 4th. It's the day of our independence, but really it's a return to not only our freedoms or our independence, but it's a call for a dependence upon God. And you say, well, what do you mean by, you know, who's on the Lord's side? Well, first of all, we are experiencing something that's been very much blatant thrown in our face. We're watching our culture trying to convince us to be woke. We just got done walking through what they call Pride Month. We're watching them redefine marriage, redefine what a male and a female is. We're watching racism, communism, socialism. We're watching division. And God is simply saying, who is on my side? Because let me tell you something. The things I just described to you, that is not what God is endorsing. And so we have to see that. And so something happened in Exodus 32, and we're going to come back to this, but look what Moses did. At at one point, God said, all right, enough is enough. And Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? In other words, there was a point where the nation and the people in the nation had to make a decision. Are you going to allow your kids to be sent off to secular school when there is pornography, perversion, pedophilia in your libraries and in their curriculums? If you do, you're not on the Lord's side. Are you going to be silent when they're parading naked men down the streets of our cities in front of four and five, six-year-old kids and you say nothing and it doesn't outrage you? You're not on the Lord's side if you shut up. If you think that it's okay to murder a child in the womb, you are not on the Lord's side. If you think that it's okay to vote for donkeys and rhinos, liberals who do not acknowledge your God, and they are working like hell to take your freedoms from you and to get God very angry, which I'm going to show you there's things that make him very angry, who are in disguise, you are not on the Lord's side. Because God is not going for those things. I even believe if you don't even fly your flag of the United States of America, I question if you're on the Lord's side. Because God is working very hard to wake up this country before it is too late. To wake up this country because you've heard. I've brought in some of the greatest scholars and men who can give you historical evidence and proof that there is another Reich that is trying to arise. That destroyed millions of innocent people, the Jewish people and others. Because the church was quiet and so was their preachers. Because they were not on the Lord's side. And so we are in a very important place right now in the United States. But before we get into this, I want you to understand a little bit of why you need to be on the Lord's side right now for your country. Let's talk a little bit about our country and and how it stood as we get ready in just a couple days to have July 4th. 247 years ago of this July 4th, A few great men adopted the Declaration of Independence. There was 56 men. In 1620, there was the Mayflower. And listen to what their compact, listen to what their decree, their declaration was. It says, in the name of God, amen. And they can show this. Having under 
undertaken for the glory of God. So why were they coming for the glory of God? And four, they wrote this, for the advancement of the Christian faith. Don't ever say that those who came to this country were not establishing this great land upon our Christian principles. And they said, we are coming for the advancement of the Christian faith. And we do solemnly and mutually, watch this, in the presence of, of God, covenant and combined ourselves together. This is the America that they founded. Now today they'll tell you Christopher Columbus was a bad guy. They'll try to tell you that this nation was not founded upon Christian principles. They'll try to subvert the truth, twist the truth, ignore the truth. And they'll do something that the scripture says is very dangerous. And that is to remove ancient landmarks of your forefathers. This is why I'm bringing it to you. Let's read some of our great men. George Washington, listen to his farewell address to the nation. He literally quoted this as he was saying goodbye, his farewell address. He said, do not, now, I don't want you to hear this, those of you that are watching, and your friends who tell you to keep religion out of politics or keep politics out of religion or the church. Don't go to that kind of church. Listen to what our founding forefather, the first president of the United States said. Don't let anyone claim tribute of American patriotism if they even attempt to remove religion from politics. And they were talking about your Christian faith. <laughs> Listen to what Patrick Henry said. It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often. That this great nation was founded not by religionists. In other words, not just somebody escaping religion. But by Christians. Not on religion, but here's why they found this nation. They had a purpose to be founded upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look at what John Adams says. And this is important for you to tell your friends. We have no government armed with Power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. In other words, there has to be a moral, uh, uh, there has to be a moral standard. You see what people say to me, oh, well, just stay out of politics. Listen to me. The reason it's become a political issue is because perverts are trying to legislate. Anti-God, anti-Christian people that we vote in are working very hard to try to legislate morality. The problem is if they don't have a moral conscience or standard that is according to the scriptures and they base it on lawlessness, they base it on their own interpretation of what they think is right and wrong. And so what we face today, because they become political, is because there hasn't been a moral voice and moral standard that has been raised. But you think about traditional marriage. That's an issue of morals. Abortion is an issue of, of morals. Changing your gender is an issue of morals. Right? Burning down someone's building is an issue of morals. Being racist is an issue of morals. But listen, what was John Adams' beef? He said, our constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Now look at what President Thomas Jefferson said because people always say, well, the separation of church and state. It's to keep the state from coming in and dictating. Okay, that's what, the, that's what uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, he was a very corrupt dude. Terrible. And he wanted to silence the church because he knew that if he could take advantage of the black race to start and help through Planned Parenthood, which was really to exterminate the black race. Do your research. Let's just put in there that a preacher can't say anything political. Why? So you can control the people and push your agenda. Look at what Thomas Jefferson said. He laid it out there. This was in his Danbury, uh, to the Danbury Baptist 
uh, his address to the Danbury Baptist. He said, the First Amendment has created a wall of separation between church and state. But that wall, that wall is one directional. It keeps the government from running the church. And it makes sure that Christian principles will always stay in government. Take that and choke. Now, I want to show you some scriptures where the United States of America is, I believe, founded in scripture. Now, don't write, oh, America is Mystery Babylon. Stop that now. I want to show you where I believe prophetically God slipped something in our Bible that I think reveals where the United States is. Are you ready? Look at Ezekiel chapter 17. It says, and there was another great eagle. What is the, what is the founding symbol? Eagle. eagle. There was another great eagle with great wings. There's no greater country than the United States of America. And had many feathers. Yeah, 50 states. And behold, the vine did bend her roots toward him and shot forth her branches towards him that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. And this place of the great eagle was planted in good soil. Oh, yes, it was. By great waters. Oh, from sea to shining sea. That it might bring forth branches. Come on. And bear fruit. We are the leading nation that has fed the world. Minister goodness to the world. And that it might be a goodly vine. In other words, that this great eagle would be a goodly vine that would bear much fruit. And it has. But there is an agenda to steal, kill, and destroy. Look at Daniel chapter 7, verses 3 through 6. It says in verse 3, And four great beasts came up from the sea. They were different from one another. The first was like a lion. That's the United Kingdom. And had eagle's wings. Did it not have the United States in a part of it? Come on. Did the land of Great Britain have? And if you look at ancient pictures, it had wings on the lion, their symbol. And notice what happens. But the wings were plucked from it. Were we not pulled from the tyranny of Britain? And it was plucked and it was lifted up from the earth. Oh, God has lifted up and shed his grace upon us. And made to stand upon the feet of a man or as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. I don't think there's any other nation that has the heart given to it for other people. That's what it's talking about. In verse 5, you can see where it talks about the, the bear, which is Russia. You could see it talks about Germany, the leopard. But I believe that these are two passages that I believe prophetically reveal the role of the United States of America and what God's intent was. Again, keep all your mystery Babylon stuff out of it. I'm simply telling you where I believe is a hidden truth where God is showing that this country was written in Scripture for a purpose. Listen, every nation on earth deals with mystery Babylon. Every nation on earth has to be careful that they, that they, they don't worship something contrary to the living God. And carry over a Babylonian system. That's a different message. I ain't even getting off of that for one troll. Okay? <laughs> Nonsense. Now, I want to show you in Judges 5 where I believe we currently are at in the United States of America. I want you to look at Judges 5, 7 through 9. Because there are certain things that must happen. If we're going to see our independence restored to us. You look at all the things that happened since the beginning of this decade. But everything that was done was to steal your freedoms. I mean, this stuff got so ridiculous. Listen, God told me two weeks ago, he said, you tell the people to strengthen their relationship with me and bind the thief. And I'm telling you, when you got a submarine tin can, Pepsi can, Coca-Cola can, and four or five guys going under the sea... And they don't talk about it. Yeah. The minute it blew up and the Navy knew about it, well, it's top secret, Pastor. They couldn't. Well, uh, I understand that, but there was a purposeful reason 
that they didn't report anything on the news because some emails from a laptop, listen, a laptop from hell was, uh, was released. They don't want that real information. So let's, let's go on. Judges 5. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, Jael the days of the Bidenites, the highways were unoccupied. In other words, people were getting off the main road. Come on, like, you're a man, you're a woman. You're a dude, stay out of women's sports and bathrooms. That is an order. Okay, that's called getting off the main road. I mean, some of you women need to learn Krav Maga. Some dude shows up to try to come into your bathroom. Oh, no, you don't. I will kick you so hard in the places that prove you're a man that you be thinking twice before you come up in here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> did he really say that? Yes, I did. I am fighting for our freedoms. <laughs> Highways are unoccupied. Travelers walk through, you know, byways of woke. Habitants of the village just ceases. Until I, until somebody actually stood up and arose named Carrie Lake. Oh, man, I was praying for her on Flashpoint last week. I got caught up in the spirit because I had a vision. The Lord showed me what he's going to do with her. And I forgot her name. I forgot who I was praying for so, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to be on worldwide TV for it to happen. They chose new gods. Sounds like the United States. They don't know the name of their god. Okay, it ain't Satan. He is so defeated. Mm hmm. You know what? I keep reminding him, you're going in a bottomless pit. You know why, devil? Because it's going to remind you of your fallen state forever. <laughs> no, you don't like to hear that. Then was there war in the gates. Man, we've had so many civil uh, issues among our country trying to bring us to a civil war. So instead, what it's using is uh, people acting uncivil. There was, a, was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000? Oh, now they're going after my guns. Oh, yeah, they're seen. Mm, we got them. Amen. Thank God for those Second Amendment. Listen, everywhere I go, I carry. I got a gun right here. I got a gun right here. Hey! <laughs> Look at my son. The Bible says if you've seen him, you've seen his father. So there you go. So there you go. All right. Now, now watch. Where do you think he gets his fighting instinct from? He gets it from Pastor Brenda. No, no. <laughs> okay, now watch this. Was there, was there anybody even carrying a weapon? They became such wusses that they weren't fighting for things like other gods and things that were destroying them. So a woman had to arise. <laughs> All right, only four ladies are going to arise in this moment. But he, oh, let me hear it. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now watch. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> you take any stupid message and make it powerful by your... <laughs> Okay, but I want you to see this. Look at verse 2. What needs to happen if we're going to bring an independence, a certain freedom back to our country again? Look at verse 2. It says, praise the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. And that verse literally, what it means is praise the Lord when Israel's leaders bravely led. And watch this. Then the people willingly followed them. Yeah, yeah. And so it takes brave leaders, and it takes willing, willing people. How many of you are going to be a brave leader? Amen. Come on, are you on the Lord's side? 
All right, now I want to show you. Now, look here. Let's go back to Exodus 32 where it talks about being on the Lord's side. Let's talk about what happened, what got God so absolutely angry that he wanted to literally wipe out a whole nation. Now, you say, well, that's old covenant. Well, thank God for Jesus in the new covenant because that's the only thing that keeps some things from getting wiped out. But it's the same God. God does get angry. Yes, but the scripture says you could be angry and sin not. There is righteous anger. And there are things that tick God off. Like the things that I talked about. Parading in front of children naked in the streets. Subjecting them to sexual education. No, it's sexual. It's pornography in the schools. Those things should make you mad, but they make God very angry. I'll prove it to you because we're going to talk about the Roman Empire. I uh, was looking at the Colosseum online uh, yesterday. I thought, ah, because I knew what I was going to preach. And I was looking at it, and, you know, and they're refurbishing it. And, and I said, Brenda, you know what's so sad about this? You know, they're talking about this great Colosseum. And I said, you know what? And, and, and if you're from Rome, just hear me out. You know what makes me want to puke? Not one time did those people that are restoring your great Colosseum mention about the bloodshed of our Christian brothers and sisters. Oh, they could talk about the gladiator spirit. Yeah, Mm -hmm, sure. What about our martyrs? It stood for Jesus. That's the problem with people. The Bible says the fear of man is a snare. You know why people don't speak up and perverts are trying to take over our country? It's because you're afraid of man. And so it becomes a snare. At some point, you just got to say, you know what? I could care less what anybody else's opinion is, but God's and our Constitution. All right, look at Exodus 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said, Hey, make us gods which will go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Hey, I got an idea. Break off earrings, golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. And let's break off all your golden earrings and and bring them to me. And he received them at their hand, fashioned with a graving tool, And he made a molten calf. And watch this. He said, these be thy gods, O Israel. Now, I'm going to show you what really, really ticked the Lord off. There are two things here that really made him mad, and it is no different. Can I tell you what it is? Look. And when verse 5, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar. And notice what his proclamation was. He said, tomorrow is a feast to who? To Yahweh, to the Lord, Jehovah God. He was literally mixing all of this false gods. That's what Baal worship is. Oh, you know, and you got to be careful because Christians do that today. A form of Baal worship. You know what it is? Oh, you know, that's a, that's a great song. Those are great Christians. No, they're not. A lot, of, a lot of these guys that get up and sing Christian songs, how come they never mention the name of Yeshua? And they call it worship. Oh, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Oh, somebody really loves you. Well, say who it is. Because, you know, we can just gather all this stuff, call it Christian music and Christian this and Christian that. They had that stupid, ridiculous book out called The Shack, and people went for that because, you know, you can call God a woman. I mean, come on, see how they try to break you down? Evangelicals went and ran, did Bible studies about The Shack. Yeah, you're insulting the God of heaven who called himself a he, who declared that he's a father, not a mother. And we do the same thing, and we call it Christianity. And that's what Aaron did. Call God a cow. Uh-oh, I don't know about you, but there's some I pray all the time. I'm like, God, you said that you are a jealous God. So I want to be jealous just like you, because like father, like son. 
and daughter. There you go. <laughs> Except you, you're, you're the daughter. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the son. <laughs> now, let's, let's go on. I'm breaking it down. And I'm going to show you that God broke it down. And watch this. They rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. Now think about what we had to walk through the last 30 days in our country. The people sat down to eat. They rose up to drink and they rose up in sexual, blatant, perversion, orgies. That's what that means. Parading themselves in front of children. And thinking God would blink his righteous eyes. And look away like, oh, it doesn't bother me. They paraded themselves out. Naked bodies. Man with man. Woman with woman. Man with another guy's wife and so on. And who knows what they did to any kid. They were so caught up in their sexual immorality. You know two things that get God mad? Bringing other gods and worshiping them. And not honoring his son. The second thing is sexual immorality. God hates it. I'm going to prove it to you. And the Lord said, Moses, break it down. This is where disco was first introduced in the whole world. God looked at him and he said, Moses, get down. Moses said, Moses said, what? And the Lord said, I'm talking about disco. And Moses got it. He goes, oh, okay. Disco this way, disco that way. I'm going to go down there and confront them with the moral law of the Ten Commandments. So you got to know your Bible and how God integrates music into things. Now watch this. So Moses got down. And he, he, he even did this with the Ten Commandments. I mean, I know it. He went like this, God, I'm going to help you, and we're going to stay alive. Stay alive. Ah, 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 they're going to stay alive. And he goes, God, in the midst of their Saturday night fever, I'm coming down with moral law. Right. And look at this. In verse, see, you got to know your Bible. In verse 9, and by the way, Moses probably had long hair like Barry Gibb. And Danny, boy, I like it. I'd grow my hair longer, but Brenda says I look better this way. But I kind of like it. And don't write and say men shouldn't have long hair. Shut up. (laughs) They shouldn't if they're trying to act like a woman. There you go. My dad always said, he said, son, there's only one man that ever walked this earth with long hair that had to have long hair. I said, well, who's that? He said, Jesus, and you ain't him. (laughs) My dad was a military guy. All right, now watch this. Right, Mom? Yeah, that's what he said. And they turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded. Now, if these people that are parading around in sexual immorality, God said, "Uh, that's not the way I commanded. But where's the voice of of rightness? Where's where's the voice of saying, hey, wait, 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 wait. You you could parade yourself around. But that ain't the way that God commanded that we are to act. And not only that, um, did anybody inform those people that there are laws of indecent exposure and pedophilia? I mean, why go to the movies and have G ratings and PG ratings? But see, that's what they're trying to do, get where that stuff disappears. All right, let's go on. Now, watch what God says in verse 9. These people are a stiff-necked people. Now, look at verse 10. Therefore, Moses, Donald Trump, leave me alone that I may wax hot against them. Because I believe Donald Trump is a deliverer to this country. Oh, you better clap better than that. Or you've been listening to MSNBC, CNN, Fox, and the lamestream news. There is no other candidate, by the way. That is putting America first. How do you know? Look at the fruit of what the man did for four years in this country. And imagine what he'll do again. You better sit down or they're going to write that we're at a Trump rally. Listen, I think you all are terrific. Listen, I think we're, anyway, let's just go on. Leave me alone. 
alone that my wrath, notice my what? My wrath may wax hot against them. So God was angry. And I'll consume them and I'll make of you a great nation. Forget about this nation of Israel. It'll be called Moses. And Moses, one man, this is where you have to understand. If we are going to get our independence back, it is, it, is, it is so important that we have dependence. If one man, Moses, could change the destiny of a nation, what can you do? What can you do to change your corrupt school board? You could do what Sean Swanson did. You could absolutely get out there and run for school board. You can make a difference. You could say, that ain't right. That ain't it. Right? Moses stood up and said, no, God, you're going to remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're going to remember your covenant with this country of our great forefathers that dedicated this country to you. That's what Moses did. And look at verse 14. And God repented of the evil. Not that he was going to do evil, but he repented. He changed his mind. You mean to tell me we can change God's mind? Yes, Jeremiah 8 is a warning to anyone who thinks prophecy is automatic. God has been speaking much about President Trump and what his intent is. But the Bible says if God has an intent to do good, but his people get late, then he'll turn you over and give you what you want. Even though his intent was to raise up a deliverer. Because you don't like a guy that, all these indictments. Really? Do you really, really think that some of the things that they're trying, is it's because they don't want him back in power. And if you can't figure that out, I don't know what to tell you. So God was very, very angry. And Moses came down with the moral law of the Ten Commandments, and he changed God's mind. Now, I want to show you something in Exodus 33 very quickly. Look at verse 18. God... And Moses are having a discussion, and Moses goes, this is right after, right after the golden calf. And Moses says, Lord, I beseech you, show me your glory. I suppose when you're seeing, you know, people parading themselves in front of our kids, grown people naked, I think that needs to be our prayer. Oh, God, the only answer is your, your glory. Because when the glory of God comes, two things happen. Well, things change. Remember the transfiguration? That's what Transfiguration means change. When Jesus was glorified, it brought change. When God's glory comes, it also reveals corruption. That's what we just read in Exodus 32. But when God's glory comes, it's connected to something, his goodness. And good overcomes evil. Light overcomes darkness. This is very important. And watch this. It also, though, is connected to judgment because the priests would go into the temple and if they had... Uh, to the Holy of Holies, and if they had sin, man, the reason they had bells on them would be, hey, uh, the bells ain't ringing, that guy's dead. Pull Stanley out. Man, he must have been up the night before doing something he shouldn't have. But look at God says in verse 19, hey, I'm going to cause all my goodness to pass before thee, but drop down to this verse. Have you ever noticed this verse? And I know all your theological reasons. Look at verse 23 that you might think. Look at verse 23, and I will take... Away my hand, and thou shalt see my back, but you're not going to see my face. Now, wait a minute. Now, we also know that God had Moses write the first five books of the Bible. And, and theologians will say that the reason that uh, he showed his back was because he was going to take Moses back into time and see what happened in creation and all that. But wait a minute. That verse is too close to a previous event and a previous chapter of what makes God mad. He said his wrath was mad. He was ready to wipe the whole people out. And it took somebody to stand up for the people. America first. Come on. Come on. We have that. Hello. And, and God said, Moses, if you really want my glory and you want my goodness for a people that deserve to be wiped out, you are going to have to see my back. I'm turning my back. And if you want me and this nation, you by God better do what the Lord said to me. 
you better strengthen your relationship with me. You're not going to have the honor of my face. You're going to have to earn it because you're going to have to follow me now because you rejected me and you chose new gods and you absolutely accepted immorality. And I believe that's where we're at. God is trying to show his face and his goodness to this country. But we are letting people absolutely dictate to us what we can and cannot do. We've watched it from the beginning of this new decade. And some of you as Christians quit acting like you are enslaved to things that violate the very constitution that these elected officials are elected to stand and stand for. And you just hand stuff to them and don't say anything. You don't push back. That's why you better get out and fly an American flag. Oh, I can't. It's a racist symbol. Oh, really? Where are those dudes at today that kneel down? Or what they do? They kneel down? I can't remember what the goofball stuff they did. No, if there's any symbol that shouldn't be, listen, I'm for speaking out and making sure that racism and prejudice does not happen in our country. But what I will not let them do is take a symbol that is to unite black, white, red, yellow, whatever ethnos you are. And bring us together so that we can celebrate freedom from the nonsense that people are trying to do to steal our, our freedoms from us. And I want you to go over to Romans chapter 1. We're going to close with this. Look at verse 18. We talked about the wrath of God. Man, I don't know if I have enough time to do this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Watch this. Who twist, ignore, or change the truth into a lie. Are we not seeing that today? And what does God say? He said, that'll make me angry. You think all these redefining of pronouns? Come on, taking a little kid and altering the way that they were created. If they were born a little boy, they, they, they now don't have to have parental permission or consent. They can change their sexual identity. Are you kidding me? Every one of you doctors ought to be ashamed of yourself. The last thing, I want you to stand to your feet. Lawlessness increases. Okay? Where there is no God, the Bible says, or where there's no king, people do what's right in their own eyes. Pastor Doug, you can come. But I want to give you hope today. Look at what David said in Psalm 27, verse 13. He said these words. He said, I would have given up. I would have fainted unless I had believed. To see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's what this 4th of July is about. We're going to see the land. This land. We're seeing America be saved. But God knows it requires you. You're saying, but pastor, it's so evil. Can I tell you something that they want you to believe? They want you really to believe that our country is as divided as it is. They want you be to believe when they were parading themselves out, acting like who knows what, and taking little kids to drag shows and blah, blah, blah. They want you to think that that is the acceptance and the mindset of most Americans. No, it's, it's about 1% that are pushing their agenda. It's going to require you to be like in Judges 5. You've got to stand up like Deborah and say, you know what, I might just be a mother. I might just be a grandma, but I won't stand up. Well, start coming to prayer. We, we pray every day. 